Okay, good morning. So today I'm recording the lecture for section 11.3. And section 11.3 is about slope of the line and rate of change. Okay, so first what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with definition um, of the slope. So the slope of the line is the ratio of the vertical change vertical change, that means change in y, between two points. And the horizontal change And horizontal change uh, represents change in x. Okay, so that's the definition of the slope. Um, slope of the line, technically, what that represents, that just represents the steepness of the line, how steep the line is. But to calculate the slope, the best way to calculate the slope is um, we mentioned that the slope represents the ratio, which is change in y, that's that vertical change, over change in x. And most of you remember slope as a rise over run. Rise over run. So, this is the straight line right here. And let's say we want to find the slope from this point to this point. So to find the slope, we just calculate how steep that line is. We're going to do rise over run, which means change in y over change of x. Okay. So here, this part represents rise, which is change in y, that's our rise. And um, this part right here represents run, which is change in x. So that's that um, horizontal change. Okay, so again, what I mentioned that slope represents the steepness of a line. Okay. Which means big slope or large slope. And I'm talking about absolute value, okay? Large slope means big steepness or large steepness. Okay, and of course, small slope represents that line has a, a smaller steepness. So let's do the example. Find the slope. of the aircraft
take off pad. Okay. And this is what we have. So let me show you the picture. So this is the ground. Um, from this point, the airplane is taking off and it's flying that way. So here we have our airplane. Okay. And what we know about this airplane that um, the height from the ground right now, this moment, that airplane, uh, the height of the airplane comparing to the ground is 500 feet. And this distance from the point where the airplane took off up to here, it's 6,000 feet. Okay, so we have to find the slope of the aircraft. So they asking to find the slope of the aircraft, which means how steep this line is. Okay, so we mentioned that the slope is rise over run, which, me which means change in y over change of x. Or even better, we have vertical change over horizontal change. So we need vertical change over horizontal change. Vertical change over horizontal change. So in our case, the vertical change is 500 and the horizontal change is 6,000 feet. We cancel and we have 5 over 60, which is just 1 over 12. Okay. So the slope is one over 12. And that's the, the example, okay? Now, what I'm going to give you next, the next I'm going to give you the slope formula between two points. So slope formula between two distinct points. Okay, so this is what we have. We have point A, which we're going to label the coordinates of point A as x1 comma y1. We have point B on the same straight line, which we're going to label coordinates as x2 comma y2 and to find the slope when we're looking for slope for slope we're using the letter m between those two points we're going to use the formula change in y which is y2 minus y1 divide by change in x which is x2 minus x1 okay where and we have to give the condition where x2 minus x1 can't be equal to zero because we can never ever divide by zero, which means x2 cannot be the same as x1. So this is just the condition, okay? So let's, everybody has to memorize the slope formula between two points and let's continue. We'll do a quick example. We have to find the slope of the line through the point B 
negative 5 comma 2 and 1 comma 3. Okay, so first what we're going to do, the slope formula is again y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So first thing what you're going to do, you're going to label the coordinates. So the first point which is given, that negative 5 represents x1, 2 represents y1 in a slope formula. And the coordinates of the second point you're going to label 1 represents x2, 3 represents y2. So we're just going to substitute. So we're having y2, which is 3, minus y1, which is 2, divided by x2, which is 1, minus x1, which is negative 5. So we're getting 1 over 6, and that's our slope. I think this is one example of how to find the slope between two given points. Just plugging it into formula, I think we're good with that. Next, what I'm going to provide it to you guys, uh, we're going to talk about different types of slopes. So next, we're talking about types of slope. Types of slopes. So the slope of the line can be negative, positive, zero, or undefined. So we have four different types of slope. So slope can be positive. Positive slope, uh, that means line increase or you can say rise from left to right. Okay, so positive slope, we have a straight line like this. This line has a positive slope because like you see the line increase or rises from left to right. Also, when you have positive slope, you can imagine yourself hiking going up the hill, okay? Um, so this is positive slope. When you're hiking, you're going up the hill, the slope is positive. Uh, we can have negative slope. So for negative slope, uh, line decrease Or you may think about fall from right to left. So negative slope, this line right here has a negative slope. So line decrease, or you may think about fall from right to left fall from left to right. From left to right. Okay, and uh, the best way to see if the slope is negative, imagine yourself sliding down uh, the swings or sliding down during winter, okay? Or when you ski or snowboarding and you're going down the hill. So this is negative slope. Slope can be zero. Slope, I will put zero slope. So only Horizontal lines have slope equal zero. Yep. 
equal to zero. Because look what happened. This is the horizontal line. Okay. This line slope represents the steepness. This line doesn't have any type of steepness. That's why every single horizontal line. So don't forget the horizontal line. This is y equal b. This is the horizontal line. Like example, y equal 5. It's a horizontal line. So every horizontal line has a slope equal 0 because we don't have any type of steepness. And slope can be undefined. Undefined slope. And undefined slope, all vertical lines. have undefined slope. Okay, so vertical lines, x equal a, that's the equation of vertical line. Like example, x equal three, right? So this is vertical line here, when your line goes um, up and down, we cannot talk about any type of stiffness. So that's why every single vertical line, we can never find the slope. The slope is undefined. So let's do an example. Four different types of slopes. Find the slope. Of the line. through the given points. Hmm. So I'm doing one extra example um, just to have um, points when you see a fraction. So let's do one more example. So I have two over three comma zero, and the second point it's negative one over six comma five. Let's just practice that again. So again, formula of the slope y two minus y one divide by x two minus x one. The first thing what we're doing we label points. So two over three it's x one zero is y one, negative one over six is x two, five it's y two. So we plug it in into the formula. So y2, which is 5, minus y1, which is 0, divide by x2, which is negative 1 over 6, minus x1, which is 2 over 3. So we end up here with 5 over, and here I'm showing work. For the denominator, we have negative 1 over 6, minus 2 over 3. So what happened, I need to get, uh, get the common denominator and the common denominator will be 6. So I have negative 1 over 6 and 2 over 3. I need to change this fraction to have 6 on the bottom. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 2 so I can get that 6. So we have negative 1 over 6 minus 4 over 6. And now since we have common denominator, you copy the denominator and you're working with numerators only. So negative 1 minus 4, this is negative 5. So on the bottom, we will have that negative 5 over 6. And now you have number divided by fraction. You're going to use that keep change flip, which means keep the top one. This is 5. C stands for change change this division to multiplication flip stands for flip over the denominator so that will become negative six over five and now instead of division you just multiply so we have five times negative six over five so this is five times negative six over five so you multiply number by numerator only five cancel we end up with negative six so the slope is negative six 
So without drawing, what I can tell that the line, which have those two points, um, it's falling down because of the negative slope. Okay. Next example, I want to talk about um, how to find the slope of vertical line. Finding slope of a vertical line Okay, so finding slope of vertical line, so we have two points. So again, find slope and with giving two points, given two points. So we have point five comma six and five comma negative two. And without graphing so you will do what you always do you will label five as x1 six as a y1 five as a x2 and negative two as a y2 and we'll use the slope formula and um, it's equal y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 let's substitute so we have negative two minus six divided by five minus five so we end up with negative eight divided by zero and look what happened. We can never ever divide by zero. So algebraically, we cannot solve it. This is undefined. So when you calculate the slope and you have zero in denominator, the slope is undefined. So what we know, we know that slope is undefined So we have vertical line, vertical line, because slope is undefined only for vertical line. And you can always graph it to see that actually it's true. We have 0 0.5 comma 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, comma 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that this point and the second point was 5 comma negative 2. Right here, so two points. So you have to create a straight line which goes through this through, through those two points, and like you see, we have vertical line. Um, so you could you could start with graphing actually those two points, and you will see that our line is vertical, so the slope will be undefined. Okay. Or without graphing, why this line is vertical? Because look what happened, those two points have the same x coordinates. So it has to be vertical line. Okay, page three, page three. Okay. Next, um, I will do a quick example with finding the slope of horizontal line so we can understand that and we can graph it and we can see it. So next example is about find slope of a horizontal line. Okay, so what is given? We have two points, three comma eight, and negative five comma eight. Okay, so you're going to find the slope Three, it's a x1, eight, it's a y1, negative five, it's x2, eight, it's a y2. So we're going to use the slope formula, m it's equal y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, and we end up with eight minus eight divided by negative five minus three, and we're getting zero divided by negative eight. So zero in numerator, that means your solution will be zero. So since slope is zero, the given line it's line is the horizontal line. And again, 
If you will graph those two points, you will see that we have horizontal line. So we have 3, 8. And we have negative 5, 8. Right here. So look what happened to create a straight line which will go through those two points. The only options we have is a horizontal line. So this is the horizontal line. The equation of this horizontal line will be y equal 8 because we're crossing y axis on 8. Okay. So this is the horizontal line. So every single horizontal line has a slope equal zero. Also, without graphing how you will know that you have horizontal line, look what happened. Those two points share the same y coordinate. So it has to be horizontal. Next, what we're going to talk about it, we're going to talk about um, parallel and perpendicular lines. And before I do that, I will go back to the, this example when we find the slope of vertical line. So we know that every vertical line has undefined slope, but also if I will ask you to create an equation of this vertical line, that will be x equal, x equal what? x equal the x-intercept, which is 5. So this is the equation of this vertical line, x equal 5. Okay. Okay, so we're moving to the next objective. Next objective is about, and this is very important, parallel and perpendicular lines. Lines. Okay. So let's talk about, start with parallel lines. So parallel lines, right? Those two lines are parallel. What happened, those, the lines are parallel when they have the same stiffness. So line, lines, in the same plane, parallel lines, that's the lines in the same plane, that do not intersect and the most important thing about parallel lines have the same slope because the slope of parallel lines, like you guys see based on the, the lines which I draw, have the same stiffness. So parallel lines have the same slope. Okay. Now let's talk about perpendicular lines. Perpendicular lines are, uh, so perpendicular lines, so I have line one, this is line two. So that's the line which intersects at 90 degree angle. So perpendicular lines, that's the lines which intersect at the right angle and the most important about perpendicular lines that the slopes the slopes of two perpendicular lines are 
are the opposites the opposite reciprocals reciprocals and I'm going to explain it in a second. So the slopes of two perpendicular lines are opposite reciprocals. That means, okay, if, let's say this line has a slope equal five, okay? And I have the line which is perpendicular to this one. And this green line will have slope equal if the line with the black color has a slope equal five. So the line which is perpendicular to this line has to have the opposite slope. So if this slope is positive, this one will be negative. And the reciprocal of five, it's one over five. So when you have perpendicular lines, one slope will be positive, the other will be negative, and they will be reciprocal of each other. So that's what I mean that they are opposite reciprocals of each other. Okay, and um, we're going to do the examples. So again, let me just add it to those definitions right here for parallel lines. The slopes are equal, which means M1, it's equal M2. The slope of the line one is the same as the slope of line two. And for perpendicular lines, those slopes are opposite reciprocal. So that means the slope of line two will be the opposite reciprocal of the slope of line one. Okay. Or you can do this way, that when you multiply those two slopes, you always will end up with negative one. Maybe you prefer this. Okay, let's do the example. So next what we're going to do, we're going to focus about determining the slope of parallel or perpendicular. lines. Okay, so that's our next examples. We'll solve couple because they are classic examples about slope. Um, so let's do it. So a given line has a slope of five over three find, so A, find the slope of a line parallel to the given line parallel to the given line. So the answer, so if the given line has a slope equal five over three, so the line which is parallel to the given line has to be equal. So the slope will be also five over three, okay? So again, the slopes of parallel lines are equal. So that's it. B, similar problem, find the slope of the perpendicular line. Uh, let's put it that way. 
find the slope of the line perpendicular to the given line. So again, going back to the problem, the given line has a slope of 5 over 3. So since our line is perpendicular, so the slope will have to be opposite, so uh, reciprocal. So given line has a positive slope, so perpendicular line will have a negative slope. And the reciprocal 5 over 3, just flip over that fraction, that will be 3 over 5. Next example. In next example, we're going to determine if lines, so we're going to check if lines are without graphing parallel. perpendicular or neither. Okay, so this is what is given. Given uh, two points of line one. So we have line one, okay? And that line one goes through those two points. So we have point negative 2, negative 3, and 4, comma negative 1. So again, this is line 1, which goes through those two points. And the second line, line 2, um, and what we know about line 2, that it intersecting those two points, which are 0, comma 2, and negative 3 comma 1. So with our graphic, we want to figure out how those two lines, L1 and L2, behave. So we have three options. Um, they can be parallel, they can be perpendicular, or neither. Neither means that they can intersect, but not at 90 degree angle. So what are we going to do first? So step one, with those type of problems, you want to find the slope of each line. So find the slope of each line using slope formula. So line one, line one, okay. Uh, we have points negative 2 comma negative 3, 4 comma negative 1, so negative 2 it's x1, negative 3 it's y1, 4 it's x2, negative 1 it's y2. So we're going to find the slope using slope formula that m is equal y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, and we're getting negative 1 minus negative 3 plus, uh, divided by 4 minus negative 2, and that will give us negative 1 plus 3 over 4 plus 2. We're getting 2 over 6, which divide each by 2, you're getting 1 over 3. So this is M1. This is our first slope. So again, I will just put label that way. M1 is equal 1 over 3. And I'm going to find the slope of line 2. So line two uh, has points zero comma two, negative three comma one. Label zero as x one, two as y one, negative three as x two, one as y two, and let's plug it in into slope formula. So y two minus y one, so we have one minus two over x two minus x1, negative 3 minus 0. So we end up with negative 1 divided by negative 3, 
that will give you one over three. So slope of second line, it's also one over three. So what we know about those lines, since the slopes are equal, those two lines are parallel to each other. So since slopes are equal, the two lines are parallel. Okay. And I guess we can do um, one more example of this. I'm not sure if you guys really need it. Okay, maybe let's just do it. Okay, B. So similar scenario, you have line one, which has points two comma negative seven, four comma one. And you have line two, which intersects, goes through those two points, negative three comma one and one comma zero. So we need to decide how those lines behave. So you do the same thing. You will find the slope of the first line using the slope formula. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So we having 1 minus negative 7 over 4 minus 2. And that will give us a divided by 2, which is 4. And we'll find the slope of the second line. So slope of the second line, y2. So again, this is x1, y1, x2, y2. So we have in y2, which is 0 minus y1, which is 1, over x2, 1 minus x1. And we're getting negative 1 divided by 4, negative 1 over 4. So look what happened. The first slope, it's 4. The other is negative 1 over 4. So 4 and negative 1 over 4 are opposite reciprocals. Also, you can always check. Um, so L1 and... L2 are perpendicular lines. Okay. Which also satisfy that the condition that M1 times M2 has to give you negative one. So like you guys see, M1 was four times slope two was negative one over four. And that's definitely will give you negative one. So you also can check this condition if you want to. But we see that they are reciprocals and opposite reciprocals. Okay, slope application will be next. So this is the last example. slope applications. Slope application. Um, so this example is from page 600, um, 655. So just don't forget that slope in the word problems when they talking about slope, they're go not going to use the word slope sometimes, but most often they're going to call slope rate of change because we know that this is change of y divided by change of x. So slope is rate of change. So let me write the problem. In, in the year, In the year 2000, the population 
owa laska was approximately Six hundred thirty thousand by by two thousand ten, it had grown to seven hundred thousand. So find the slope find the I will call it this way rate of change find the rate of change of the population population of Alaska okay so what you're going to do first okay so step one create two points so when you create two points okay um, create them that way time it's always x so year is going to be your x coordinate population it's going to be your y coordinate so always year represents x coordinate on any type of graph and population will be y so we're creating two points uh first they're talking about population of alaska in 2000 so we have 2000 and the population in 2000 was 630,000. And the second point will represent year 2010. And the population in 2010 was 700,000. Okay, so we have two points. You're going to label them as X1, Y1, and X2, Y2. And step two will be find the slope between two points. Between two points. Use slope formula. So the slope formula it's m equal y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 so we having 700,000 minus 630,000 divided by x2 which is 2010 minus x1 which is 2000 and the slope will be equal 700 when you calculate so the slope is 700. So how are you going to interpret the results? What that slope 700 means? First of all, it's positive. So we see that population is increasing. Um, if the slope will be negative, the population will be decreasing. Uh, but the meaning, the answer, the meaning uh, is, it, excuse me, it means that the population of, the, uh, of Alaska increase at rate 700 per year. During this time period.
which means from 2000 to 210. So approximately, because that's not, um, you know, um, approximate. So we estimating. So approximately every year we have 700 people, 700 more people living in Alaska, either moving in, uh, but the population is growing and the rate of change is 700. So from 2000 to 2010, about uh, the rate of increase in population is about 700 per year. Okay, so that's it from the section 11.3. Um, thank you for watching the lecture. And um, I will talk to you guys next soon during, during our Zoom meeting. And we'll talk a little more about your first test. So thank you so much for watching.